It's been a dizzy two months now. In November, December, I always seem to come across a wonderful range of interesting toys. Some of them I buy. Some of them I exchange as Christmas presents with family and friends. Sometimes I'm just given them and I like to return it some way. But I, I've had a good range of stuff this year. So let me just show you some of the stuff I found. This is the one that I purchased with great glee at a new gallery in London. It's an optical illusion game produced by Paul Bars. I've met I do very well. And what he's done is divided well, very well-known pictures of optical illusions and divided them into sets of cards which then children have got to put together and make into a very well-known picture if they can have a go at it. So I think this is a marvellous way of doing it. Superb. And we've got to get the staircase going if we can. And it's the end of the staircase where it appears as though these two lots of small creatures, gnomes or something, are walking in counter directions, but one's going up, one's going down, and you realise they're going down and down and down, or up and up and up. It never seems to stop. It's extraordinary. And it's a very, very famous one by, by Escher, and it's delightful to find. The second one is another famous one, which I've had... In my, these are all very well-known ones in, in books, that I've got loads of books of optical illusions, and I'm very, very fond of all these pictures, because they have... I think they have about 20 pictures altogether. Here we are. Ray or Mayer, Mayer produced this. It was I've forgotten his name, but it's um, it's a, it's a, an impossible, obviously an impossible archway that, and he's holding an impossible object as well to make it even worse. So those are sets of which uh, which children have to find. There's sets of four. There's one more which I want to show you because it's one of those upside down ones, and it's a very remarkable one by Verbeek, who was famous in about 1900 for doing lots of little drawings which you have to read as comics and turn it upside down and do it the other way. So this is halfway through the story and there's some um, old man Mufferoo who's been attacked by a large red fish and his, his little canoe is about to sink I think it is. And it's late in the story you come across another happening and this is what happens when you turn this upside down because that's a very obviously a uh, little island in the background with gulls flying. But when you turn it upside down, an incredible transformation takes place, which is that um, his wife's been caught by a giant rock, ROC, a, a, a mythical bird from, I think, Arab um, folk tales. Uh, and, and it's caught, he caught put the lady in, 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 in his enormous beak like that. What an amazing piece that is. So it introduces people who are playing this story, this, this game, into some of the world's best, and there are some of the pictures along here as well. About 20 really, really well known optical illusions, which um, a lot of my friends are going to be delighted with, especially when you look at the quality of the cards, I think. So that's a great thing to have in my collection. I'm very, very pleased to have bought that. Here's an extraordinary one, which I almost want to think of as a, as a Watson, although a friend of mine has pointed out what you probably do with it. It's battery operated, there's, there's batteries inside, which you can show, just lift it up and there's batteries. And it's got a fan inside, but the fan did something unexpected, which I hadn't realised. I thought it was doing a very soft air blow, and it's not, it's doing a, the opposite. Turn it on. Hardly any air coming out. And that's because it's not coming out. It's coming in. So I want to pick up a little bit of crumb like this on the table. It'll pick it up. When I stop it, it'll fall down again. So it's sucking at a very gentle rate, possibly crumbs in gaps in the table. When you've got one, sometimes you've got gaps to pick up crumbs because you've got a little filter there inside which holds it. I'm just guessing that because I'm not actually sure, and I haven't got the box. This was given to me by a friend of mine just as a, as a watcher because he didn't know what it was for. And I thought, well, that's an interesting item. I'll try it out and see if I can get people to explain it. So that was a nice thing to have. This is another item I picked up over the period. It's something that a friend of mine, Rufus Butler says, has perfected and made a wonderful sound. It's got six horizontal black lines and then white lines in between. And then the picture underneath is segmented so that it appears to have motion as I move it up and down. A very, very fine optical illusion. He made great big pictures on the walls, which as you walk past them, did its action. As you, as you walk past the picture, it did an action of movement, which is amazing. 
And uh, I think this reminds me of it, so I must definitely keep that one in my collection. There's an extraordinary little card here, which I think is very charming. I've never seen this before. It's some. Um, it, it, it shows a, a flower vase, and the card's got little flowers inside, which are those pieces there. You then write your name and and your greeting in it, and then when you want to set it up, you just put some flowers in the vase. It, there's a little slot at the top there, which you feed them in like this. And I'll just put a yellow one in, and I said, then you present this to someone, and I think they're very charmed because they've got a lovely little bouquet of flowers all appearing inside the vase. Very nice idea that. Isn't that sweet? And that will sit on the table like that. Very charming. There's the spares. So I'm very pleased to have that in my collection. There's a what I call a five second one that one of my nieces gave me, which is um, it's one of those things you waggle about, but you've got to light it up. There's batteries inside and this is what's going to happen. It lights up with a bit of that first of all. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at that. My goodness. Or the second one is a bit slower. And the third one is Oh, slower still. I think there's a one, oh, there's two, three. Oh, that's right. Oh, yes, right. There's, a, a, there's melting colours. So it's a waggle, waggle, waggle thing. And five seconds later, you want to put it down and do something else, don't you? <laughs> but I like things like this. A lot of my puzzles or a lot of my f toys and gadgets are what I call half minute wonders, and some of them are five second wonders. That's a bit more than five seconds. Here's another what's it, which really baffles me. I can't think what this is for. It's got a perfectly well-functioning spirit level on the top there, which means it's got to be absolutely level to the ground, completely horizontal to work. But look at what's underneath it. There's this bizarre thing with lots of little, sort of little, little, little things sticking up, as if you could put something in there and hold it when you click it. When you click it, then it's not level anymore. I can't make this out at all. If any of you got any ideas why someone's made this and what purpose you use it for, other than brushing your hair and getting your hair level, I think um, I'd love to hear about it because it baffles me and the chap who gave it to me gives me lots and lots of little oddities and he says, what's this for Tim? Let me know when you found out. <laughs> so I'll give it a go, but with your help I think. And the last item is from the next store, or the near neighbour of mine, Lana, and this is a beautiful thing to get, there's more to it than I realised. It's a bottle of gin flavoured fruit fruits. But they were with, 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 with gin in the background, and it's got two particular lovely features about it. It's a crystal, Christmas globe, it's called. And the first thing is when you turn it upside down, you suddenly find there's a lot of gold leaf there, making a little storm. Look at that. It's beautiful. When you turn it around like that, you see them starting to twirl around in a circle. And the other thing is, it lights up. Yes, it does. It lights up push a little switch like that and suddenly all the little gold flecks which are perfectly edible can be made to look very pretty because they catch the light and being gold they reflect the light better so that's a beautiful thing to have you really want to be a little bit sip, sip, sips of that I'll church my colleagues over our supper I think and see if what they think about it because gold has been known for a long time I've got a cake card that's been, been given which has got tiny gold flecks in it as well it's perfectly safe to eat it because they're so tiny and gold is completely inert, of course. So, and the box for this is something else, isn't it? Look at that. What a present. What a gift. What a neighbour.